Hey everyone, HF Masters here, and today we are doing our Green Ninja Mech Dragon review. Thanks to Warner Bros. for sending this, and if you haven't seen the video, go ahead and check out the uh, box unboxing that we got from Warner Bros. We do get a few other sets, which uh, just pretty cool thing going on there. But anyways, let's get back onto this set. This set comes with 544 pieces and will retail for $50 in the United States. It also comes with four minifigures. The front just shows the dragon flying around and Garmadon trying to uh, attack the dragon with the ultimate weapon. The back of the box just shows off some of the features that come in this set. But anyways, let's open this up. And here is the Green Ninja Mech Dragon fully complete. Now, first of all, I just want to talk about the head real quick because this head is actually kind of a little bit of a controversial thing going on. People are not entirely fans of the molded head pieces for the dragons. They say it's not too good looking. However, I think that LEGO has done a really good job of integrating both somewhat of a brick built head along with using the specialized pieces. As you can see on the head, it looks fine, it looks great. There's a lot of, you know, small detailing going on. They have golden bananas, which is just completely awesome. The eyes are there, um, made out of the minifigure headpiece in translucent yellowish-greenish color. And there's just a lot of small, like, detailing going on, which really makes the head look a lot better. In fact, the top part, you wouldn't even think, is a brick belt, because it's just really solid, in my opinion. The bottom, it, it's a little bit worse. It does go on a ratchet joint, which is fine. Um, I would have preferred more of like a mixel ball joint that they could have done, just so you could have, you know, maximum range with that, but it's fine on how that works. And lastly, my only other complaint with the head is the way it rotates. Um, you can, obviously, you can rotate it around. You can do full 360 and you can move it left to right. And that's fine, however, I personally would have preferred to have seen it be able to go up and down because this other section right here, the, more, the next section, you can move it up and down, but then if you wanna have the next section up, you know, the whole dragon head is up and you can't move the dragon head down a little bit, so it's just a little bit awkward. And personally, I would have liked to have seen the dragon head to be able to go up and down, however, that is just my opinion. I'm sure others will have different opinions, so that's just what I wanted to say about the head. The neck of the Mech Dragon is another really solid part of this build. First of all, there is a little bit of asymmetricality, and that's just for the fact that LEGO was nice enough to give us a place to hold Lloyd's sword, which is something very awesome. A lot of the time, they just don't do something like this and you are you end up with a weapon that's just kind of somewhere either in the cockpit or just you know just laying around somewhere but with this they've actually done a favor and they've put a clip so you can easily put the weapon on and that's just a very nice thing that they've done also I do want to mention that the controls here this whole little control section looks very nice you have two uh, I believe they were printed however they might have been stickers, I, I'm not too, entirely too sure, however, I do believe that these two pieces were printed, and these are just really nice kind of like control panels that they've got going on. Along with the control sticks, they really just help this set kind of feel mechanical, which is actually something that the head does a good job at not really conveying. It kind of looks more realistic on the head, which again, an, just another thing that's really nice with the head. However, on this next section, you can tell this is definitely mechanical. And lastly, you can see on the neck, the first of the spikes, which you're going to see later on, is a reoccurring trend that this set has. The main section of this build is obviously, you know, the biggest section, the longest section. It's just a very interesting thing going on here. First of all, they actually do have this little kind of like Technic rubber-ish piece here, and this just allows it to move a tad bit, which is very nice, just something that adds a, a little bit of playability when you're flying this thing around. Also, I do want to, you know, mention this is a huge deal with the set. There's actually these parts that are on these ball joints, and what you can simply do 
with that is move those up and then all of a sudden, whoa, you've got jets. Really conveying the fact that this is a mech dragon. This thing does not fly by itself. It is not a real dragon. And these just, again, really help to prove that. And the nice thing is they've, they've done it so you can have this out but you can also have it, you know, inside and it doesn't look bad either way, which I think is something that LEGO did a really good job on. It looks a little bit worse on the back than it does in the front when you have the jets out. However, it's not a big deal. Like, you know this thing is supposed to be flying. It's not such, it's not a crazy thing. It's not even, it's just a little bit of a nitpick at the worst. But I mean, otherwise, this is just a really nice thing. And the way they integrate it into this build is very well done. When you close this up, you can't even really tell that there's some sort of jet thing that's supposed to be there, which I think they've done a really good job with. Also, again, we have the reoccurring theme of these spikes, which, again, add just a little bit more detail to the set, which I really do appreciate. LEGO did a really good job at making the set reasonably priced and still having a lot of good details. The last bit of this dragon is the tail, and this tail does not th disappoint at all. What they've done here is they've integrated a nice little gear function, which you just allows the whole tail to swing really nicely. And they've also added in some extra, you know, posability with the tail, because every single part of this tail you can move in any direction that you want, which is very nice. And because of that, when you actually use the gear, it just the tail just flows very well. And another play feature that this tail also has is the ability to knock over a minifigure, which is also nice. However, you can actually get the dragon a little bit up too high so you won't knock over the minifigure. However, that's not really an issue with this set because you can lower it so it works fine. And of course, we have the reoccurring theme with the spikes. And lastly, I do want to mention at the end here how they added these two golden swords just to really kind of flow into the kind of flame piece that they've used in gold, this um, sort of, I I'm not sure exactly what you would call it, I know it was a flame piece though used in CCBS a lot, I think that's where it originated from, so I'm going to call it a flame piece, um, if there's any other term for it, you know, it's just a simple piece, but not really too much going on with that tail, however, it is still a very nice touch, and I think it really actually works well with the whole spike design that they've been using this entire build. Lastly, I just want to very quickly mention the legs of this dragon. Personally, the legs are fine, they're whatever. The bottom two legs, nothing special going on there. Very simple legs, but effective. The top portion of the legs do have actually a stud shooter, which is kind of interesting, just a little nice play feature they've done here, which you can use when you know you're flying around or if you have it just laying down some somewhat of a leaned position, you can use that. However, I do personally think that it works better if you're gonna be flying around with the dragon. However, that is my opinion. And you know, if you want the dragon to be laying down and you can easily fire it, it doesn't really matter. It's, it all comes to how you would want to play with this. However, again, it is a nice detail, and the legs, for what they are, they work well. The, the first, you know, the front two, definitely a lot better than the, the back of the legs, however. Usually with these, the back of the legs do end up, you know, getting the short end of the stick. When it comes to the build, however, they both work. They're both on these ratchet joints, which, very simple. And they also do have this uh, ball joint, uh, which you can easily move around, along with the um, Exoforce pieces, the um, Exoforce, I think, hand pieces, which they've integrated very well. You can move the claws of this, which is, again, something very nice. Something also not necessary, but a nice touch. There are four minifigures that are included in this set, being Lloyd, Sensei Wu, Garmadon, and Charlie. My personal favorite is obviously Garmadon. If you haven't seen my top 10 Ninjago movie minifigures list, then you should definitely check that out because Garmadon, you know, you should know if you've seen the video. Having him in person, I'm not really too big of a fan of the cloth. He also is kind of clustered with all everything he has going on. He does come with the ultimate weapon, which is a very important part of the movie, supposedly. And then, you know, we have the rest of the figures. Lloyd comes with his 
sword, Sensei Wu comes with a staff, and Charlie comes with a fish spear. Lloyd is also the only figure in the set to have uh, double-sided, you know, face printing, which is quite interesting. I'm a little bit surprised that Garmadon, or at least, you know, Charlie doesn't have it. Sensei Wu I'm not surprised with, though. And, I mean, overall, I think these figures are fine. Overall, I think the Green Ninja Mech Dragon is a very solid set for its price and just in general what it has to offer. This set, it just the play features in this set work really well. The color scheme is very fantastic. I think that this set just nailed every possible thing it could have done. The minifigure selection, you know, it's a little bit small, however the minifigures you're getting are all really great. The dragon itself, a very, very good build has a lot of play features and I think for any kid that would want this set this would definitely be a good set to you know buy a kid as a gift and I think that this set definitely is one of the standout sets from the Lego Ninjago movie line of course all the sets are very well done but this set alone just one of the best ones a lot of great play features just a, has a lot to offer but that's my opinion on the Lego Ninjago movie Green Ninja Mech Dragon set. Again, thanks to Warner Bros. for sending me the set. Without them, this review wouldn't be possible. But until next time, this is HF Masters saying goodbye.